Hi, I'm the average consumer, and this is my review on Iron Man 3. That's right, I am the average consumer. I fit the demographic. I have, I have a little bit of disposable income, which means I have to choose what I spend it on wisely. So you want me to spend my money on your product, you better sell it to me good and better make it good. So with that being said, this is what the average consumer thinks of Iron Man 3. Essentially, for um, a non-spoiler review, I'll just do the non-spoiler part first, and then the rest of the review will be totally spoilers. So if you haven't seen it yet and you want it, you're just wondering how is it? It's good. It's fantastic. It is by far one of the better superhero movies. It's one of the better part three movies, and I am saying that comparing it to Back to the Future 3, Return of the Jedi. Uh, the plot basically is Tony must stop a terrorist while overcoming uh, panic attacks. That's the plot. Stretched over, you know, the entire movie. Um, so it's basically the equivalent of Tony must stop a so, you know, it's a very simple plot stretched over the entire movie. Um, which is, and the thing that I don't like what superhero movies have been doing lately, which is the villain comes in at the end and the hero says, oh yeah, it must be the villain. Like, the Avengers did this. Uh, where they figured out, um, Loki's plan. Oh, he's gonna do it at Stark Tower! Well, they didn't really seem set up. That was just Tony going, okay, we're that's where we're gonna fight everyone. Everyone, the fight's at Stark Tower. You know, it's just... Have Loki give clues to it, so that the next time you watch it, you're like, oh, yeah, he's talking about Stark Tower. So when they figured out it, yeah. Anyway, with this movie, uh... With, okay, and I, I, I just stopped talking, which is bad. Uh, with this movie, um, if you were wondering, is there Avengers references in this movie? Uh, Avengers 2 references? No. At least not that I know of, at least not that I could spot. Um, but it totally acknowledges the Avengers movie. In fact, that's, and spoiler alert, that's why Tony's having panic attacks. Uh, personally, I didn't think it really fit, because at the end of the Avengers, he was like, still Tony. He was like, yay, let's get shawarma and all that stuff. And then this one, he's got crippling panic attacks. It, you know, in, in the entire Avengers movie, he seems to be dealing with the ideas of Thor and aliens just fine. And then in this one, he's like, oh my god, there's... You know, gods and aliens! Oh no, it just seemed... Well, you imagine if Bill Murray had panic attacks in Ghostbusters 2 because there's ghosts. It's like, it doesn't match up the fact that he had accepted it so well in the last movie, and then in this movie, he could barely walk. Or I shouldn't say he could barely walk, but... It just didn't feel like it was a reason for panic attacks. Um... What else can I say? And then I mean, I liked uh, the fact that all the characters, all your favorite characters are back. I don't know if it's a cliche thing to say, but the point I'm making is they all have something to do. They may not be in the first half of the movie, but they are show up more and more throughout the movie until finally, during the third act climax, they're all there. They all have something to do. Um, so that's what I liked about it as a sequel. Uh, what else did I like? I liked um, 
It was totally, like I keep saying, it's totally original. Sometimes Tony does stuff without even the armor. You know, and he um, does something where he goes to Home Depot and gets like a, makes a cheapo, you know, suit. Like not even a full suit, but just like a cheapo, you know, way of overcoming stuff. So it's not just Tony in the suit. You know, it's not just Tony. Okay, time to fight. Okay, now I'm Tony. Okay, time to fight. It's Tony making stuff, um, and you know, overcoming it as himself and not as Iron Man. So that I liked. Um, I liked uh, the villain. Okay, here's here, I'm gonna start going into the list of things I didn't like, even though I highly recommend it. I didn't like, um, and I hit major spoilers. Major spoilers. During the climax, um, Tony calls for like all of his suits to come. You know, he, like he's got one, Rhodey's got one, and then like there's all these empty suits that are fighting that supposedly Jarvis is. Sorry, I should be looking at the camera now, but beautiful face. Uh, you know, Tony's got one, Rhodey's got one. You know, and then there's empty suits. Uh, that are fighting that supposedly Jarvis is, you know, controlling, which, it's like, it's like Suri making phone calls for me, it, I don't think it really, you know, if there was people in him, if there was all of his friends coming together and stuff like that, you know, that would be cool, but, um, you know, they have Jarvis, you know, with all these empty suits, but it just felt, that part felt unnecessary because, uh, there was all these un- you know, these bad guys, these disposable thugs that are always in superhero movies ever since the Adam West Batman. Uh, and it, they have these empty suits just fight these faceless thugs. It just felt like it's just background filler. And if it was, you know, it, it was cool to see a bunch of suits fly. And it was like another thing where uh, Tony, and again, major spoilers, Tony crash lands in... I think it was Kentucky, and then he goes to Miami to, to beat the bad guy, and he had this ability throughout the movie to have the suit attract to his skin, uh, which I thought was cool. That I thought was cool because they kind of explained it a little bit, and that's what is tricky with sci-fi, is explaining science that does not exist in the real world. And so they explained it enough. Because it's a superhero movie, they got bigger fish to fry, and then explain how he, you know, and uh, it, you know, and so uh, there was a moment where he's in Miami and he calls the suit from Kentucky, and they even made a joke about it, which I kind of liked, but it just seemed like an overdone thing. It, if they did it three times in the movie, it would have I would have liked it a lot more. Um, but every, I mean, they do a whole bunch of great original stuff. They mix it up a bit. Uh, I'm trying to think what else to say without just recapping the movie itself. Um, I, I'm trying to think of anything else I could say. I hope that helped. I uh, uh, next week's movie will be Star Trek Into the Darkness. Um, my thoughts right now going into it. I'm really excited. Uh, I'm normally a Star Wars guy, you know, at least original trilogy, you know, I mean, uh, the Old Testament, um, but as far as the Star Trek movie goes, I liked the original, I'm just stating these now for before and after, uh, I liked the 2009 Star Trek because right at the end, they did the opening uh, introduction, you know, space, the final frontier. You know, these kind of voyages of Star Trek Dover as boldly go where no man has gone before. And, like, when you hear that, you're, like, getting pumped up for Star Trek because it's right at the beginning of the show. It's like the, you know, like the themes, it's the, like the theme song. And they get it going and it's like to boldly go where no man has gone before. And you're kind of like, yeah, Star Trek. And movie ends. Open, you know, and the end credits. And it's kind of like the... Uh, last, the first movie, or whatever, 9, uh, the 2009 one, um, you know, left you wanting more. And from, and I hate watching too many commercials for a movie before it comes out, 
but from the little bit of clips that I've seen, and trust me, there's a lot out there. It was like every day there was a new trailer, you know, the international trailer, the, you know, extended trailer, the teaser trailer, the, the you know, theatrical trailer, the, 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 you know, every day there was like a new Star Trek trailer coming out. Don't care. I've seen one. It looks good enough. I don't even know who the villain is. I don't want to know until I see the movie. I want to explain it to. I want the movie to explain to me who the villain is, and that some internet site predicting what the movie is gonna be like, like it's like it's the weather. Um. But to me, it just looks like they have everything set up, and this one's gonna stir it up a bit. Uh. So. Iron Man 3, I recommend, and I'm looking forward to Star Trek next week, and I'm sorry this review was 10 minutes long, I hope to make it shorter in editing.